What was the most embarrassing public tantrum you've seen a grown adult throw? Story one. My first job in high school working at an ice cream parlor. We had three sizes, two scoops, one scoop, and child size. Why it wasn't just large, medium, and small? Don't ask me. One day, a guy that had to be well into his 80s slowly walks in. It was an early afternoon before the typical rush at night, so he was able to walk right up to the counter and stare at our board of flavors, toppings, etc. You can see on his face he's getting irate for some reason. He's pacing quicker. Here and there, you can see his mouth open to talk, but he doesn't. And then finally, he speaks. I want your smallest ice cream, but it's absolutely demeaning that I have to order a child size. I'm a grown man. I have children and grandchildren of my own. This goes on and on, and I'm unable to get a word in edgewise. He keeps going, and finally I interrupt. How about this? I just give you the smallest size we have, call it a small, and charge you for our cheapest ice cream. For some reason, this answer wasn't acceptable. He goes back into his rant about being a grown man and is now screaming at me about how insulted he was. I again reiterate, I can just give you a small ice cream, but no, anything beneath an institutional change wasn't going to stop this guy. He just kept going. Now other customers are starting to walk in and just watch him rant, screaming, do I look like a child? And things like, I have grandchildren older than you. Meanwhile, he's refusing to order something else or just consider the smallest size as small rather than child size, which was written on the board and won't leave either. The owner now comes in from the back to see what's going on because there's now a long line. This has been going on a good 10 minutes. As is usual in these situations, the owner introduces himself as the owner, which prompted the response, good, your employee insulted me. As the man explained how I insulted him, the owner pivoted to the same thing I did. Can we just call it a small and be on with it? This made things worse. Finally, after him screaming at the owner for a few more minutes, the owner says, you came into my shop, don't like the name I used for my ice cream sizes, berated one of my employees and are berating me. Please stop using the phrase disrespected because you're the only one being disrespectful. Usually in internet stories, this is when the writer puts and everyone claps, but no one did. The situation was just too awkward for them to acknowledge that they were paying attention. The old man went to talk, and the owner cut him off and just said, let me be frank, tell me what will make you happy and I'll do it. The old man stood there for a few seconds and just angrily said, I'll never come back here again, and walked back out the door. In conclusion, I got screamed at because the ice cream shop I worked at called a small, a child size. In food service, I met so many customers who stormed out of a stupid crap claiming they'd never return but sadly, most of them did. Complaining is what makes them happy, and people in customer service put up with it longer than most. Story two, I help my cousin out on jobs where he gets in over his head. One time, our uncle went out for sandwiches and got them for the whole crew. My grown, 45-year-old cousin had a freaking meltdown on the job site and started throwing crap because his sandwich had pickles on it. He broke the windows of his own vehicle and destroyed about 1,000 worth of materials over pickles. We're both on the spectrum. But he was never disciplined as a child and allowed to lash out, so he does it frequently. This is the biggest one I've ever seen anyway. Story three. I used to work as a manager at a wings place. A lady and a guy got incredibly upset at us when they asked for their order and we didn't have it. We've been waiting for 30 minutes. How isn't it done? We don't have any orders in the last week with that name. I don't know what to tell you. Well, we paid for it. Would it be under a different name, perhaps? Oh yeah, our son ordered it. Try Jack Smith instead. Not actually his name, but you get it. Okay, that's not showing up either. How about you show me your receipt and I can look up the confirmation number? The girl hands me the receipt. The son ordered their food under the name EA Sports. It's in the game. When I let them know what it was actually under and got the food for them, they legit was screaming at me and trying to say it was my fault. The guy started throwing chairs at other customers and hit the windows with a large rock. Police were called and they left. Eventually, the guy came back three hours later to yell at me and my crew more, and we called the police a second time. I pray for that son, and I hope he's okay. His parents seemed a little off their rockers. Story four. I've posted this before, but I witnessed some lady having a full-blown tantrum in a Culver's drive through I was on the headset that day, and when she pulled up to the order screen, I asked for her order. She snapped back that she wasn't ready, so I told her to go ahead and order when she was ready. For whatever reason, that set her off because, again, she snapped back and said, You know what? Just for that, I will take my time. She sat silently in her car for a few minutes and I could hear the cars behind her starting to honk. The car directly behind her must have caught onto her just sitting there refusing to order. So he pulled around her, drove up to my window, and asked if he could order directly from me. 
The other cars in line must have noticed as well, because when I handed him his receipt, they began to pull in front of the lady, refusing to order, and started a new line at my window, ordering directly from me. The lady who refused to order went absolutely bananas. She laid on her horn, grabbing her steering wheel, and started thrashing around, shaking her car violently, screaming at the top of her lungs that people were cutting in front of her. She eventually drove around to my drive through window, gave me the finger, and did a burnout. I think that was the biggest tantrum I've seen an adult throw. Story 5. A longtime parishioner entered church on Sunday and saw a new young family sitting in her pew. She told them that they'd have to move as they were sitting in the pew she'd occupied for worship services for many years. As I once described when they refused to relocate, the lady said in full voice for all to hear that she wouldn't stand for their insubordination and that she was leaving and taking her substantial pledge with her. I mean, Jesus lost his crap completely at people trying to hustle outside of his dad's temple, and yet, 2,000 years later, there's a massive sect of Christians that missed the memo. Story 6. I do business with a local AT&T store. I was getting a phone for our company, and this guy was trying to get an iPhone for his teenage daughter. I'm not sure what went on, but apparently they didn't have the exact phone she wanted, and they were going to have to order it. That wasn't good enough, so he started having a full-blown temper tantrum, saying the sales associate was ruining his daughter's birthday gift. The manager comes out to see what's going on, and there's another customer who's in there, and this guy is like 6'5 goatee, bald head, roided up with a full-sleeve tattoo, and he says, hey, calm down. And the angry dad said, who said that? The bald giant said, I did. In a very angry voice, and the dad just put his head down and shut up. The manager was trying to see what was going on, and the dad was like, we're going to go now. Uh, I wish I could say everyone clapped, but the sales associate was extremely grateful. Story 7. Uh, when I used to work at Best Buy, a woman was absolutely teed off and threatening to sue for false advertisement because a Kindle case was too cheaper than what was listed in the ads in the Sunday paper. Story 8. My own mother. We were getting food at a food truck. They must have pressed the wrong button or something because she got charged for $11 when it should have been 10 My mom immediately blows up about it, demanding they give her back her $1. The cashier apologized profusely and said it was a mistake. They got the manager or owner or whatever to come over and help refund the money. The whole time they're trying to figure the computer out, my mom is ranting and raving about how they were overcharging her on purpose to pocket the money since she didn't tip. She calls them thieves and criminals. I straight up told her, I'll give you a dollar right now if you stop. And of course, she says it's all about the principal. After they fix it, we leave. She keeps ranting to me about it, so I make up an excuse to leave. Later in a text, she tells me she went to the nearest police station after that and made a report against them. I very much wish I could have seen the police officer's reaction. I bet they were dying laughing inside and probably threw her report away the moment she left. This woman is 40 years old. What? In the actual? Frick. You just reminded me of a client. I work in an animal hospital that called and left a message for the doctor she just saw stating. I found some white fur on me, and I know it didn't come from my dog because he has black fur. I find this absolutely unacceptable, and I will be leaving a message with the hospital manager. Neither of us heard anything from the hospital manager. Story 9. The last time I was at Heathrow Airport, I witnessed a woman in her 30s, dressed in business attire, literally kicking and screaming because they wouldn't let her take an open carton of juice through the security checkpoint. Story 10. My sister had the worst temper of anyone I've ever known. We were at the drive through at McDonald's, and she was like, she had ordered McNuggets with BBQ sauce. When we got to the window, she was handed the nuggets, but no sauce. She just sat there staring expectantly at the cashier. Finally, she said, well, are you going to give me my sauce or what? The cashier turned to the side, away from the window, and my sister said, excuse me, are you deaf? Where is my sauce? The cashier said, I'm getting it. The cashier handed over fistfuls of sauce packets and didn't do it in a friendly way. So my sister threw half of the packets directly at the face of the cashier and called her the B word. Then she drove out of there like a bat out of hell. I absolutely hated going anywhere with my sister because she regularly caused a scene over the dumbest things. I have a friend that's similarly embarrassing no matter where we went. The hardware store won't cut the eaves shorter. The frick is wrong with you. Don't you know these won't fit in my frickin' car? The ice cream place didn't have any hot fudge ready. What kind of frickin' idiots are you people? I stopped hanging out with her because of that. Story 11. I was at Friendly's with a group of friends. One of them brought their boyfriend with them. We all got our treats and sat down. This dude comes up to us and says, Do you think I should complain about the slushy not having enough syrup? 
uh, we all kind of agree that, sure, it's okay to see if they can do something to fix it. He goes up there and talks to the girl at the register. I couldn't make out everything, but essentially she told them that they made it the way they were told, and she couldn't do anything. He takes what remains of his slushy and slams it on the counter, getting it everywhere. He yells at her that she can take the drink back then. A manager tells him that he's got to go. We were all just in shock. I didn't even know where to put my face. I was so embarrassed. Him, on the other hand, he wasn't ashamed at all. My friend defends her boyfriend, saying that it wasn't a big deal and they should really have fixed his drink. Story 12, customer service for a doctor's office credit card program. Uh, spent 45 minutes trying to help a doctor change his password. I couldn't actually help them because every time I would tell them to do something specific, they would do this stress, sigh, sobbing kind of thing. It would remind me every 30 seconds that he went to school for eight years so he wouldn't have to deal with this. Mind you, he was clearly in his 20s and 30s, not an old guy that has an excuse to not know how to do it. After the 45 minutes of this rotation, he finally passed the phone to his receptionist. We shared a laugh over his attitude, and we reset the password in 30 seconds. As someone else who's worked tech support for doctor's offices, I feel this pain so deeply in my soul. I honestly have begun to wonder if you can't keep up with technological advancements required for your job, like EMRs and password requirements, how in the heck am I supposed to believe you can keep up with medical advancements too? Yikes. Story 13. I've seen a stranger throw a tantrum because he didn't know what to order for breakfast, asked for input, but for some reason got angry when our cashier suggested a breakfast sandwich. My uncle threw a tantrum and stormed off to bed because he was the first person out when we were playing Monopoly. The following night, he again was the first person out, but instead of storming off to bed, he sat there and sulked because, and I quote, last night I didn't get any. Mm-hmm, I wonder why. First out in Monopoly is better than winning, actually. Story 14. I sell safety equipment to major companies. You have to have paperwork to get discounts for this stuff. I've had multiple grown men come in, tell me they work for X, and they want the company discount. I tell them I need their forms, and they begin throwing a fit. They throw around the whole, do you know who I am? bit and get even madder when I do not, in fact, know who they are. If you are such a big shot, why don't you have the form? At the Burning Man entry gate, we take special delight in making sure that the privileged jerks follow the rules. Since we're the ones in control, it's more like malicious bureaucracy than malicious compliance. But the stories are similar enough. Most of these morons are no-name DJs and artists. Uh, no, we will not call the boss of Burning Man because you said you're friends with her. So we have a saying, do you know who I think I am? Story 15. The one I will always remember happened over 20 years ago. Long story, slightly shorter, and this was back before September 11th. A man and his girlfriend came to the gate at the airport. There was some mix-up where the girlfriend had given her luggage to the skycap, but hadn't checked in for the flight, so she didn't have a boarding pass. The flight was oversold, and there was no seat available for her. It was a flight to Washington, D.C., and it was the last one out until tomorrow morning. When this guy finds out she can't get on the plane, he goes ballistic. He literally starts screaming at the gate agent. In a post-September 11th world, I'm reasonably certain he would have been arrested or at least kicked out of the airport. He's going on and on about how important he is and that he's a member of some platinum club. How dare his girlfriend not get on the plane? People with the cheap tickets should be booted to accommodate her. He'll reach out to the corporate offices, etc. Basically, he was making a huge public butt out of himself. Well, it wasn't this gate agent's first rodeo either. She let him scream himself out, and when he took a breath, she looked at him and said, There is exactly one person who can get your girlfriend onto the plane, and that person is me. I suggest you take a seat, be patient, and I'll see what I can do. He started going off again, and she said louder than him, I will see what I can do. Finally, he sat down. She made some phone calls, typed on her computer, and finally came over the loudspeaker saying, This flight is overbooked. Do we have any customers willing to take a later flight for X amount of flight vouchers? Silence. She asked a couple more times, raising the ante, and again, silence. Now I had nowhere to be until Tuesday, so I could have easily taken a flight the next day, but I'll be darned if that idiot is going to get his way. Seems like everyone else there felt the same way. No one took the offer. Eventually, she called the two of them over and said, I'm sorry, I've offered the max amount of vouchers I can and no one's taking it. I need to start boarding now. If she needs to get out tonight, she can try another airline, or I can put her on tomorrow's flight right now. The guy was like, frick you, and walked off with his very embarrassed girlfriend in tow as he was muttering under his breath. 
Bye bye If the guy hadn't been such a first-class prick to the gate agent who literally had nothing to do with the situation, she could have taken my seat and been on her way. Story 16. Oh man, I've been dying for a question like this. Does anyone remember the Rick and Morty sequin sauce release at McDonald's a few years ago? Anyways, my friend loves the show but couldn't go due to work, so I went to try and get some for him. There was a line of people who'd been waiting for a while. Apparently, some of the workers gave them out to people in the drive-thru. So they were all out and all they had were posters. A couple of guys were throwing complete temper tantrums and screaming and cussing out the workers for not properly handing out the sauce packets. After screaming at them for a good 10-15 minutes, the guy demands a poster. The worker says they have to purchase a meal in order to get the poster, and the guy flips out again and orders a meal in a really condescending tone. As soon as he gets the meal and his poster, he takes his meal and starts throwing it against the walls and then takes his two children with the poster and walks away while cussing at them on the way out. The next few guys in the line do the same thing. They only had like five, eight posters, the vast majority of people towards the front all threw baby tantrums and threw their food and drinks everywhere, making a huge mess. Luckily, I recorded a decent amount of it. Absolutely insane how childish these grown men were acting over a freaking sauce packet. Most of them had their children with them too. It was honestly just so insane, I couldn't believe it. Story 17. I worked at McDonald's in high school. There were a few, but one stands out above all of the others. It's lunchtime, and we're busy. The filet o fish is not a particularly popular sandwich, so we only ever had a couple of pieces of fish ready to avoid having to throw them away. A guy comes into the drive-thru and orders four. I kid you not, as his order is popping up on our screen, the hold timer for the two fish we had already made was going off. We have to fry two regardless, so we decide to just make all four fresh. The manager apologizes and tells the guy to pull forward and wait. He's not happy, but he does. Meanwhile, we keep serving people who didn't order fish. After the third car or so gets their order and leaves, the guy is in the lobby demanding to see the manager. He wants to know why he's still waiting, since we're clearly serving other people. The manager explains that none of these people ordered fish, and that the fish will be ready in a few minutes. Apologizes again for the wait. The guy is teed off. He starts yelling about how it's ridiculous that we have no fish ready. The manager explains how the hold timer went off and she wasn't about to serve anyone. Expired food. Since we had to make a couple anyway, we're making you all four fresh. Most people would be happy that they weren't served questionable food, but not this guy. The guy went ballistic. He started yelling about how we should have served him the two we had and we shouldn't serve anyone else until his order, blah, blah, blah. You get the idea. Then he threatens my manager with physical violence if he's not served his order right now. She tells him he needs to go out to his car right now or she'll be calling the police. The guy storms out of the restaurant, slamming the door so hard behind him that he broke it. A few seconds later, we hear screeching tires as he leaves the parking lot without his fish. Story 18. My father. Probably more to do with the fact that I was related to him and it ruined a day trip, but here it is. So at the time, we mother, father, teenage brother, and preteen me lived close to a great beach, and there was a small amusement park next to it. A variety of issues meant going there as a family for a day out was a special treat and something that was highly anticipated. We hadn't decided if we'd do the beach doing some boogie boarding or the amusement park water slide and crazy golf, so he took the boards with us, but in the end decided not to use them. This was very bad. My mother was a deficient human being for bringing them with us and committing the crime of bringing unnecessary items on a day trip. In the car park, in full view of everyone, there he was, screaming. He threw his hat on the ground and was jumping up and down, clenching his fists as if he were having a vertical seizure. Of course, we knew not to say anything because he would just become violent and we had to walk on eggshells for the rest of the day. I have since gone no contact with him and he was shocked convinced that someone had manipulated me into it because he never did anything that would make someone not want to be in a relationship with him.